Lesson 2 for October 5 to 11, Nehemiah, read by Dr. Percy Harold. Tuesday, October 8, Nehemiah speaks out. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 11 says that Nehemiah is the king's cupbearer. To us, this may seem like an unimportant job, but cupbearers could be men of powerful influence since they had constant and close access to the king. Cupbearers tasted beverages for the king in order to prevent illness or death of the king. Herodotus points out that the Persians held cupbearers in high honour as they were regarded as high officials. For instance, the cupbearer of the Assyrian king Esarhaddon also was the chief minister of the kingdom. Thus, Nehemiah holds a high position in the kingdom, and because of his access to the king, he pleads with God to use him in speaking to the king about the situation in Judah. Question. Read Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. What happened as a result of Nehemiah's prayers and fasting? Nehemiah 2, beginning at verse 1, And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. Therefore the king said to me, Why is your face sad, since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies waste and its gates are burned with fire? Then the king said to me, What do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven and I said to the king, If it pleases the king and if your servant has found favour in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, the queen also sitting beside him, How long will your journey be, and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Furthermore I said to the king, If it pleases the king, let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river, that they must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah, and a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he must give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel, which pertains to the temple, for the city wall, and for the house that I will occupy. And the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my God upon me. The prayer is answered in the month of Nisan, which is roughly the month of April of 444 BC. Four months have passed since Hanani and the Jews brought the disturbing news about Jerusalem to Nehemiah. For four months Nehemiah prayed and fasted, and every day it might have seemed to him as if God were not answering. But God's timing is always perfect. God prepared the king to hear Nehemiah and to respond favourably. It was not an everyday occurrence to have the cupbearer relieved of his duties for a time to be a governor in a different land. God spoke through Nehemiah and impressed the Persian king Artaxerxes I to make Nehemiah a governor over the territory of Judah. The mention of the queen suggests that this was possibly a private occasion, as it was not customary for the queen always to be present for formal banquets. Nehemiah does not immediately mention Jerusalem in order to keep the king from having preconceived ideas, but rather he makes an emotional appeal to the king about something personal to him. By the time the specific place is mentioned, the king has been won. And so to finish today, in what ways can we see a parallel between Nehemiah's position in this court and Daniel's in Babylon? What does it say about Nehemiah's character that the king seems so positively disposed toward him? This week's lesson has been read by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. It is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department, and through the services of Christian Services for the Blind. A video of this podcast also occurs on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.